All right, hey guys, Corey here with a uh, talk on binary search trees, which are our next little data structure in C. Binary search trees are one of my favorites. I um, just think they're really interesting. They're one of the first data structures that I learned. Um, they're like amazing. I see, I haven't finished the code. Um, we're going to finish up coding it together, but I'm going to talk about what they do. Uh, binary search tree is really useful because it organizes data in such a way that at the very worst case, if I needed to search for something in my list, Normally, if I just had a random list, I need to, at worst case, search through the entire list, right? I just go until I find it. Well, binary search tree is a way of sorting it so that, uh, at worst, you only ever have to look through half of your list. And it's really nice. You can do it with straight uh, arrays as well, um, but I chose to do it um, in true C fashion with structs. Um, so if we're doing it uh, <clears throat> this way uh, with structs, um, basically, I have a similar struct that we've seen in the last couple of videos on C, uh, just a simple left node and a right node now, uh, and a value inside of it. So this is like the data number. So uh, in this case, I'm just using numbers. I'm going to be sorting a list of numbers. Okay. Um, and then we're going to have three functions. We're going to have make node, uh, that just takes a simple value and will make us return us a node uh, pointer. Um, just an add node to the tree and uh, print, print the tree. So pretty simple. Um, now, if we want to make the node, it's pretty simple, like we have been doing in the last couple of videos. It's just a node pointer. I'm just going to call it new node, and I'm going to have it equal to, um, well, I'm going to stop that, and then go new node um, value is equal to val. And then I have to initialize its pointers to be null. This is, a, this is an error that you may encounter a lot of times. If, if your code is crashing and you don't know why, um, and it, it's not throwing you any errors at compile time, it's all a runtime error, um, check that you're setting these to null. This is the most common error that I've seen in, in binary search trees, and it's a really big pain to, to spot. Okay. You may think they're automatically sent to, uh, specified to null, but they're not, so we have to tell them null ourselves. Um, so that's, pretty, that's it right there. That's one function already done, make node. Um, simple make node. Um, when we do the add node, um, all we're going to do is we're going to put in the value that we want to add to our list and that function itself will take over making the node for us because it's kind of obvious that we'll want a node. Um, so we don't have to have two separate calls in our main function. I just put one inside the other. Um, so how do we add it to the tree? Well first we're going to need to uh, put in a pointer to the top node on the tree because we need to have the top guy to work our way down. And so how it's going to work is that um, Everyone smaller than you is going to be stored to your left, and everyone bigger than you is going to be stored to your right. Sounds pretty straightforward because that's how ascending to, you know, descending to ascending uh, numbers should be stored anyway, or uh, if you just organize in that way. But with structures, it's a little different. Um, so I'm going to come up and I'm going to compare myself to the node's value. And if I'm less than it, I'm going to go to his left node and compare himself with it. And if I'm less than that guy, I'll go to his left node. As you notice, I'm only going half, uh, I'm only going to be comparing myself with half of the tree every time. Usually you only have to do like a quarter of the list if there's a lot of things in there. Um, it's really, it's really efficient, really fast. And as soon as I hit a null node, I know that's my spot on the tree. Okay, so I'm just going to pop myself in there. Um, and I can switch to the right node if I go down and I find I'm bigger than the next guy, I'm going to go to his right node, and if it's null, I'll just pop myself in there. So first we're going to do that. We're going to go uh, node pointer, current node equals top node. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say while the current node is not equal to null, We're going to say if um, current node value is greater than, and so right now uh, we're going to assume that you don't put in any things of the same value into this list. If you did, you just need to put like an equal sign or change up how you want to handle that. Sometimes if it's equal to, you want to put it in the left node, depending on your situation. Sometimes you want to put it in the right node. It really depends on how you want to handle your data. Um, and so I'm not going to do, uh, it'll get a little unnecessarily complex if I do, um, putting in things at the same value right now. So we're just going to assume it's either greater than or less than, no duplicates. Current node, uh, so if the current node's value is greater than our value and the new node, 
Well, uh, that means we want to go to the left because we're less than the guy, so we want to go to the left. Um, I'm not going to fill out the conditional. Otherwise, we also want to go to, we want to go to his right, okay? So let's do this. So current node is equal to current node uh, left node, okay? And here, right node. Okay. But there's something we want to check. What if that guy's node is null, right? If current node's left node is null. Um, see, what we're going to do in this case is uh, we can do it two ways. We can either right now check whether the node is null itself, or we can, uh, so right here, right now, uh, in this if statement, we can check, is the left node null? Well, then we might as well just not even wait for another loop and just tack them in there. Um, you may not want to do this, but a problem that you may run into that you'll have to deal with, and there's ways you could deal with it, is that if you assign current node to the current node left node, and it ends up being null, and then later you come back around, um, actually, no, that'll be okay. That'll be fine. Um, what'll happen? Actually, I saw something that wasn't there. You're right. <laughs> uh, it'll be fine. Because if it's null, then it's just going to break out. Right? That's the best part about conditionals. <laughs> Current node uh, equals uh, new node. Okay. Good. Oh yeah. There's one issue we have to deal with, is that current node. Um, if we assign it to new node, we've never assigned it previously. We've never assigned the previous guy uh, to have uh, the guy above him. We've never told him that he has a new left node, right? Because he still thinks he's pointing to null. And like what we've done with linked lists and such, that if you're pointing to null. And, you, and uh, it's basically like there's no one else in the list, right? If nobody points to you, you're not in the list. So what we need to do here is we need to go, if the current node value is less than new node uh, value, we need to check something. Is current node uh, dot left node um, null? If it's null, Then we will go current node dot left node equals new node. So if his left node is null and we know the guy he's compared with is less than him, we'll just give him the freebie. We'll put him into the, the spot, the empty spot, right? He'll take over. Okay? Um, so if this isn't true, this is true, that means we're done, by the way, so we can break out. If this isn't true, then we just want to continue on and go to his left node. We'll do the same over here. It's the same exact uh, line of thinking. If the right node is equal to null, well, we're just going to end it right here. We're just going to say, you know, for, we're going to say break out. But right before you break out, the current node's right node is equal to new node. Okay. So this way, if it's null, we might as well not even go down there and check. We're just going to, because we're done, we're going to put the left guy in there. Thus be current node. We're just going to put him into that empty spot and then break out. Otherwise, we're just going to make the current node equal to that non-empty spot and continue comparing. So we're going to keep comparing, comparing, comparing until we hit a spot that's empty and go, oh, well, I might as well just take it. Okay. Print tree. Print tree is a little interesting. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to print f, and we're going to go value, and then we're going to go percent d, and we're going to go, I'm just going to print off the top node's value. Remember, these are pointers, so i got to use the arrows. I'm, I'm dereferencing them all. Okay, pretty straightforward. But how do I print off the rest of the tree? Well, we're going to have to use a little bit of recursion, okay? Um, and... 
Recursion gets a little bit interesting. Um, if you've never seen Recursion before, quick little aside on it, is uh, it's just calling upon the function, calling, having a function call upon itself. So, uh, whoops, fact int x, and we'll go, uh, here's an example of recursion. Uh, if x equals 1, return 1, else return x times fact x minus 1. So here's an example of everyone's first recursion function that you learned. So I made a factorial function. As we know, a factorial function, if factorial of 5 is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Factorial of 3 is 3 times 2 times 1, something like that. So for this function, I said if x is equal to 1, return 1, because the factorial of 1 is just 1. Otherwise, return x, the number I put in, times the factorial of itself minus 1. So if I put 3 into this function, what's going to happen is I'm going to go 3. Okay, that's not 1. So return 3 times to the factorial of 2. Well, what is factorial of 2? Well, 2 is not 1. So return 2 times the factorial of 1. Oh, the factorial of 1 is 1. So it'll go 1, and then it'll go jump back up. T 1 times that, 2. So 2. Jump back up again. 2 times 3. 6. So it calls upon itself. So that's what we're going to be doing a little taste of here. Now, I know recursion can be kind of hard to to grasp a little bit and uh, honestly it's a little hard to program for because sometimes it's really interesting to think of what the behavior will be once it's made like 10 loops. Sometimes it switches its behavior when it goes deep and that's really interesting. Um, so we print out the value of the node we entered but then we're also going to go print tree place more. Can you guess what we're going to do here? We're going to do print tree uh, we're going to print tree and we're going to go um, top node, left node, like that. And we'll go temp node, right node, like that. So um, what's this going to do? Well, I think about it, it looks straightforward. I'm just going to print the guy's left and right node. Well, no, actually, it's going to call print tree again. So then the left node becomes the new top guy. It'll print out his value, and then it'll jump to that guy's left node and then that guy's left node, and then that guy's left node, until we want it to make sure that they're not null. If top node, this is the only thing we really got to check for, not null. Just gonna stick these in there. Else, Actually, this has to be another if as well. <laughs> not, uh, not B. Tired this morning. There was a guy that was just playing League of Legends below me in my apartment building. I was just screaming at the top of his lungs. Don't know why. <laughs> it's going to find its way on a montage on YouTube. Uh -huh. yeah, they'll probably hear me knocking on his door. I was knocking on his door for like 10 minutes to tell him to be quiet. And like he just couldn't hear me out there, and I was just out there, just knock, 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 knock. Like neighbors were coming out, and he just couldn't hear me because he was, he had his headphones on. Oh, ridiculous! Oh man! All right, cool. <laughs> Back to program. Uh, Thirteen minutes, not bad. So print tree. So we'll go print f value. We'll print off the value, and then if the left node's not null, we'll jump down there, print off that guy, and then we'll print off his left node if it's not null, and continue down until that guy's left node is null. Once it's null, we'll pop back up. Print off that guy's right node and continue down the cycle until we pop all the way back up, go back to him, and now we continue with his right node going all the way down the trees. First going down the left, popping back up, going to the right, popping back, and so forth. So it's just going to go all the left branches until we finish, and then it'll go down the first right branch and go down all that guy's left branches, and then it'll go down all his right and so on and so forth. So it's a little hard to visualize. But we're going to keep looping through ourselves until we print out everything that's being pointed to. We are going to go through literally everything that's going to be pointed to, and that uh, is allowed to us through recursion. So now we're pretty much done. Now just to test it. Okay. So I'm just going to make a node called top node. Give them the value of 5. I'm just going to add node 11, uh, 9, 11, 4, 6, 2, 1, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to print the tree. Um, and I'm going to add actually one other thing so we can see this. 
I'm going to add one more command. Print f. I'm going to separate them by a colon. I'm going to put them on one line. Sorry if this is a. So we know whether it's a left node or a right node printing out. Print tree. It'll help us kind of visualize the tree coming on. There we go. Okay. Um, pretty straightforward. And you notice now, since I just made the top node a pointer, uh, unlike the previous nodes, I don't need to pass in the address anymore. I can just pass straight in top node. Print F. Oh, it's value. My bad. Let's clean up any errors Corey made. Oh, great. <laughs> that means I didn't reference something correctly. Um, I'm going to pause real fast and find where I put my pointer in. I'll be right back. All right, everybody. It's uh, working now, but it's time to play What Was That Error? Everybody's favorite game in programming. Um, people get a lack of sleep because of playing this game. That's for sure. Um, I figured it out. Uh, I'm looking for it. Yeah, right here. I just did, I forgot the memory allocate size of node. Always a big one. In fact, I always talk about it being a big error in the previous videos, and I, <laughs> I can't. I, I still fall for it <laughs> all the time. So, uh, just goes to show that I'm human programmers. It doesn't matter how good you get, you still make little errors like that all the time. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, it's ridiculous. So if we run it though, uh, we see here. I'm gonna walk through main. We see no pointer. Make node five. So he should be our top guy. And then nine should be to the right of him. Eleven should be to the right of him. Uh, of, of him. Uh, if we still have five at the top, it should be four to his left. And then it should be four. And then six to four's right. And then it should be two to four's left. And then one to four's left or two's left. So if we look. Yeah, we have five. We have fours on his left. Two's on that guy's left. Looks good. One's on that guy's left. That's good. Um, oh, six is a left node of nine, right? Because six is bigger than five, but less than nine. So it's going to be nine's left node, and we see nine's printed first. And then 11 was the only guy we put bigger than nine, uh, nine. So it looks good. Yeah, it looks like it was sorted correctly. Now, say I want to search for a node. One more function. Uh, void return node. Okay, it's not going to be a void, that's for sure. Node pointer, top node. And what we'll have it do is we'll, it'll have it tell us um, how long it takes to search for a data type here. And it'll return a node. It'll also return the node. We won't need that right now, but it's just good practice to be putting that stuff. So I'll just add a bunch of new values. Top node uh, 13. In fact, I'll copy paste this. We'll make this just a big thing to show you how fast. Uh, we can search through stuff like this. Put in seven hasn't gone in yet, right? And then uh, three hasn't gone in yet. And then what other numbers? Let's go 24. Let's just go a big one. Then just uh, 112. Let's just go crazy there. And then what we haven't done? Eight. Okay, yeah. All right, so now we have a pretty big node list. Oh, except for here. Oh, what should? Oh, that's just for print tree. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Um, so we want to hunt for a node. I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to do our node pointer. Node pointer. Uh, return node. And it's going to take in node pointer. Type node. Okay. So what am I going to do with this guy? Um, well, uh, I'm just going to use this as my, him as an example of, uh, normally you would have something to search through the nodes like this, but I'm going to add in a couple things that just allow us to see how fast he's searching, like just a counter for how many searches he's done. So, uh, nodes visited equals one, and that'll just be the top node. Current node equals, um, top node. Oh, we'll need to put in a value, of course, to find. And val. There we go. While uh, current node dot val. There we go. So while the value we're at of the current node that we're at is not equal val, or the current 
node. Well, and, and, sorry. If, as long as it's not null, I should put the null check first. Because it'll, it'll evaluate that first, which will be important. If you try to access a, no, a parameter of a null structure, it'll like blank out on you. So you want to check for null first. So if the current node is equal to null, we will break as well. Um, and it's got to be that the current node um, C checks the first one. If the first one is false, it doesn't even bother evaluating the next guy, by the way. Current node val. Uh, and all times not equal. Okay. So as long as we're not null, oh, uh, well. <laughs> now, as long as we're not null. Before, as long as we're null, we're going to keep on cranking, but that's not good. So while we're not null and we haven't hit the correct value, um, we'll do a couple things. We'll say if current node value is greater than val current node is equal to uh, current node left node. So we're just going to move down to the left node. Else, we're obviously going to move up to, or move to the right guy. Else, current node is equal to current node right node. Okay. Alright. So, once we've uh, broken out, either it's null or we found the right value. So if current node, so if it's null, we know we didn't find it in the list. It doesn't exist. Uh, then we will print f and then return null. We'll print f that value is not in the list. Otherwise, we know it's in the list and we will print F node or value found visited percent nodes. And I will make that equal to the nodes visited, which you know, I obviously have to give a value. <laughs> it's visited, nodes visited, plus plus. Okay. Blank up. So that should give us an idea of how long it's taking to search through this stuff. And I will do up here. I will do once we've made our tree and we print it out, then I'll do a couple I'll do return tree top node. Uh let's just do let's just do eleven easy mode real fast. Let's do like three of these. And you'll see that we don't have to we don't we, even if I do the value of uh, the highest value in the list, which if I had a normal list should be all the way at the end, 112, right? If I do the highest value in the list, and then even if I do the lowest value in the list, one, you'll see a worst case, which we'll see in these guys, I have to search through half of the numbers at, at worst. And then we'll do one with the value that's not in there. I'll just go like, uh, what value isn't there in there? Like 35 is not in there, I hope. Okay, yeah, 35 is not in there. Um, so uh, let's test out if this works or not. Um, this will give us a good idea on the organization of our list. All right, guys, hey, back. Had a couple errors. One was I forgot to give a data point to current node. I had to make it node pointer. Here I use parentheses instead of the normal brackets. Um, up here I had to add in the int val to the implicit declaration. And then I simply called return tree instead of return node. <laughs> All right, we're ready for action. Let's go. Okay. So, uh, value found. So, I should probably have it print out the value. Let me do that. Value percent D. And then I'll have it be that. Okay, let's run that. All right, perfect. 
So value 11 found, visited three nodes. Value one found, visited four nodes. Value 112 found, visited five nodes. So that's the biggest value in the list. So if we were just using an array, 112 would be at the very, very end, right? And we'd have to, if we start at the beginning, we'd have to search through the entire list to find it. But look, how many nodes do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like 13 nodes about, maybe 12. And it only took five to find the you know, biggest guy. Um, things in the middle it takes significantly less time, like 11 only took three, one found four, and then we see at the end it also said the value is not found in the list, which works. You know, even if I change these up to like seven and six and four, things in the middle take significantly less time. Like four only took two nodes. Ooh, seven took five. That's the biggest guy that taken. And six three, and you'll see that it's consistent in the sense that if I run it again, and I run it again and I run it again, you'll see that every time we get the same um, uh, time it takes to find the note. So it's consistent in its time, which is also really good um, because, you know, like sometimes you're not consistent in your algorithms. Like, for example, shell source, the fastest sorting algorithm in Java, you know, or it's just really computer programming as long as you can implement it. Um, it's generally the fastest. Occasionally it can perform terrible. In fact, my favorite BOGO sort <laughs> is a sorting algorithm where it just randomly swaps around values until it's sorted. Now usually this takes an insanely long amount of time and you should never use Bogosort. But every once in a while, Bogosort gets it right on the first try. And therefore Bogosort, in its best case, is the fastest sorting algorithm out there. Which is absolutely hilarious. Worst case, it's by far the worst. And technically due to random chance, it can go on basically for like an infinite amount of time and never sort it. But best case, you're number one. So it's important to think about the consistency of your algorithms, okay? Because uh, even though, best case, you could be number one, I, no, one no one should ever use Bogo, sorry. Um, so that's it for uh, this talk on uh, binary history. Hope you learned something. Have fun. See you next time.